Okay, let's do this. It's been a minute. Oh my God, I'm actually freaking out. My heart is beating out of my chest. <sighs> Anyway, what's up besties? Good morning. How's it going? How are you guys doing? Today I'm gonna be answering a whole bunch of random questions about myself so that you guys can get to know me a little bit more. It's been a while since I actually did this and to be honest, I low-key miss sit down videos where we just sit and chat and catch up and all that fun stuff. And so I figured let me answer a whole bunch of random questions about myself that may or may not make sense to you, but you might just enjoy watching. So let's dive right into it. Cause if I'm the Ocean, you're the rain. We only need each other, baby. You know we're the same. I'm a nervous mess. I don't know why. Oops. It's cloudy and thundering and rainy outside, super dark, so I have to use the lights. There's no other way, so I do hope it comes across looking fine. Anyway, no further excuses. Let's just do this. I googled a whole bunch of get to know me questions and I picked up 34 questions to answer about myself since I'm 34 years old. These are the questions. I'm standing on business, honey. Before we dive right into the questions though, I do want to do a little quick life update, catch up, all the fun stuff because there was a time where I used to be super consistent on YouTube and you guys knew like no matter how hard I worked I still had vlogs going up every single week without fail and I still had my 9 to 5 and all that fun stuff and now I don't have my 9 to 5 but I haven't been as consistent so it's very like confusing I don't know about you guys but I find myself very confused the truth is I I feel like I'm going through a midlife crisis <laughs> sounds so ridiculous oh my god it actually sounds ridiculous but that's the truth i have spoken to dizzy basil about this some of the things that used to bring me so much joy were bringing me so much stress i know midlife crisis hits when you're 40 maybe 50 even i don't know but i'm at a point where i'm questioning just about every single thing in my life i went through this when i was around 25 years old so i'm wondering if it's like every 10 year thing <laughs> that happens to me i don't know but i'm pretty much questioning everything and i told dizzy about it and we spoke about our marriage we spoke about you know what it is that we want for ourselves what it is that we want for our businesses <clears throat> Jeez, louisa excuse me um okay <coughs> my throat doesn't want me talking about this at all but anyway we spoke about you know what it is that we want for our businesses what it is we want for our careers and during that time i wasn't necessarily vlogging because i genuinely did not feel happy i was just so ridiculously unhappy i don't know why but i mean I've always been the person who knocks myself out of it and keep it moving and keep it going and just make it work. But you know you can do that for a certain period of time until you start crashing again and reality kicks in and all that not so fun stuff and you kind of have to face your monsters. And so I really had to question myself, like what is it about this? Time or this age or this period or whatever it was honestly I had no idea what it is about it that made me feel so unhappy and so unfulfilled and actually I think unfulfilled is the right word unhappy is a very strong word I wasn't necessarily happy with the vlogs I was putting out there I wasn't necessarily happy with the content I was producing at the time and instead of going at it it just felt so much more natural and so much more easier to just let it go and pump the brakes for a second which is what i did and by doing that unfortunately meant there are no vlogs so i'm not as consistent as i used to be the same on my instagram page in fact the same on all my other social media platforms i was just crickets <laughs> but i've gained some perspective i shot a wedding recently there's just something about shooting weddings that just renews your perspective it's just so heartwarming <laughs> I went home, I spent a little bit of time at home with the kids and I did anything and everything that meant absolutely nothing. I was not trying to be productive, I was not trying to shoot anything. I mean, yes, I did vlog and yes, I did shoot some content, but I shot what felt great in the moment. That's why I was so inconsistent. That's why I was MIA a little bit. I felt really, really honestly disconnected from everything else and it was just a struggle. One of my biggest cat peeves with YouTubers has always been the whole, you know, content, content, and you disappear and you come back on some it's so overwhelming it's so hard i can't keep up whatever when in fact you're the one who's deciding your own schedule <laughs> so you could very well decide to do one vlog a week instead of complaining about 
three vlogs a week kind of thing. And I found myself heading toward that direction where I was honestly genuinely going to start complaining about how much work it takes, how tired I am, how I don't feel like doing it and all that not so fun stuff. And I figured instead of being that person, let me just pump the brakes and just take a minute to refill my cup and recharge and all of that fun stuff that gets my soul going. And guess what? We are here, we're back, it's nice. So without any further ado, I have been rumbling for like eight minutes straight. Who am I even? Well, you know I'm back when I'm rumbling forever. <laughs> Anyway, let's dive right into the questions. Again, these questions mean absolutely nothing. It's just answering questions to get to know somebody better. So you get to know me a little bit better. I would really appreciate it if you guys can leave a little bit more about yourselves in the comment section down below. Which country, which city, which province are you watching from? How long have you been watching us? All of that fun stuff. Let's reconnect in the comment section down below. Let's do the questions. What time do you go to bed? This one I picked specifically because there was a time where I would go to bed at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., editing, working, all that fun stuff. I wake up super exhausted but ready to go and I would just go 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 but I've since changed up my sleep schedule and believe me when I say I'm in bed at 9 p.m. latest 10 p.m. no ifs buts or maybes doesn't matter how much work I still got to do I'm in bed latest at 10 p.m. and it's been great because I wake up at 5 a.m. who am I even I don't know I have no idea who this person is. That's what's up. What is your funniest memory from high school? Oh my, I have a few, but the one that's standing out right now is, so I went to boarding school. It was a Catholic school, all girls. Very few of us, like literally the school principal knew everybody by name. We we're not allowed to bring cell phones. We had two public phones, one in the hall, in the two, no, yeah, in the hall where we did assembly and the other one in the hustle matron's kitchen. So you would either ask her to make a phone call or you would go to the hall to make a phone call if that phone is not working you obviously have to ask so no cell phones allowed but other girls would bring their cell phones i hope nobody's watching this from the school other girls would bring their cell phones and i would back my mother beg her to let me bring it and she would say no every time so i stole the phone once <laughs> And she told, we had a family friend who was a teacher at the boarding school and she told her that I brought the phone to school and so the next day she was just like, give it to me. That was that. But that's not the funny part. Here's the funny part. A school principal really believed in punishment, like not corporal punishment, but she would punish you until you regret whatever itty bitty thing you were doing. One time we're walking on the holy street. Yes, we had a holy street. Oh. It's the street we walked on to go to church. Nobody was actually allowed to be there unless you're going to church. So we're walking on there. Some girls were talking. I wasn't talking, but unfortunately for me, when she did the cutoff for everybody from that point backwards to stand there, I was part of the people standing there. Oh, so no. we stood there for a small forever and it was freezing cold and I was so miserable and so heartbroken and so angry because I wasn't talking. So anyway, I told my parents about this and my mom was like, you know what, it's fine. You can take your phone if it's gonna bring you some comfort whatever take your phone but make sure you don't get caught because i'm not gonna be in trouble for that me and my two other friends brought our phones with it was good it was great and so we hid our phones in our physics lab because we used to have the keys to the lab so we can clean up all the fun stuff we were being miss goody two shoes Meanwhile, pushing a whole different agenda. We had to survive, okay? So anyway, we put our cell phones in the physics lab. Everything was good. And the one time we were writing exams, they had just finished building the new physics lab building. We get done with the exam. We walk out of the exam hall. We look into this physics lab and it's empty. Oh, no. Like empty. All the boxes are gone. Oh my God, we are in trouble. Oh my God, it was so funny. We were both laughing and panicking at the same time. That has just stuck in my head all this time. We did get our phones back. We found a way to get the keys to the new physics lab and got our phones back. That was quite comical. Every time I think about that, I'm just like, the things we did in boarding school when everybody thought we were such good girls. Wow, but we had to survive. It was just white lies. White lies, white lies. What is an interesting fact about you? Ooh, interesting. I'm terrified of heights, is that interesting? I don't know, I'm trying to remember the other day I was talking to Aisha about something and she said, oh, that's a fun fact I didn't know about you. I'm terrified of heights and I would rather drive than fly. Like I'm happy to drive anywhere I can drive to Paris because it can't be done instead of flying to Paris. I don't know if that's interesting, but 
yeah, that's that. What's the first thing you notice about people? Whether or not they are approachable. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, obviously you see people, how they dress, you see their makeup, and you're just like, oh my God, they're so gorgeous. But for me, it's always that thing, like, can I actually approach this person and start having a conversation with them? And I think that stems from the fact that I'm such an introvert. I mean, now I'm getting out of my shell more and more. It feels low-key illegal to say I'm an introvert, but I still think I'm an introvert. And so when I go out to events or meetings or stuff, the first thing I notice with people is whether or not they're approachable. And that's how I sort of like start my conversation. I usually gravitate to a person that I that looks approachable and like we can have a conversation. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's not. <laughs> What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Ooh, cookies and cream. Also bubble gum. If I'm buying ice cream or making it at home, cookies and cream anytime. What was your first job? Oh my, my first official job slip and all was actually at university yeah I worked as an audiovisual assistant in the audiovisual department so basically what we did you know how in university they have projectors we would go into the lecture hall before the lecture starts set up the projector make sure it's perfectly square on the wall that everybody's gonna be able to see sometimes the projector loses the setting and it's like super tiny so you have to adjust the settings and make sure that it's projecting perfectly well I did all of that it was literally one of the crazy and nerve-wracking jobs ever because sometimes the lecture would show up earlier and so if the projector is not working they are on your case and so you're doing the job while you panic sometimes the students go in earlier and so you like basically the zoo animal and everybody's looking at you trying to figure out what's wrong with this projector it was hard it was hard and there were times where the lecture would call because the projector switched off all of a sudden they would overheat look i don't think there was a lot of budget then those projectors were probably from like the stone age or something so it was wild it was wild but that was my first job i worked it for two years paid for my own accommodation my own groceries obviously it was so nice i loved it what's the first item on your bucket list drive to paris it's crazy it's a huge one it's a it's a huge one what's your go-to hairstyle a high bun Yeah. Have you been to any concerts or festivals? I've never been to a concert. I would love to be or to go to a concert. I know Chris Brown is coming in December. I really wanted to go, but I don't necessarily enjoy Chris Brown's recent music and that's potentially what he's gonna be playing at this concert. I loved his older music, you know, Excuse Me Miss, Deuces. That's the music I loved. I don't really connect with his current music. And so I don't really wanna waste time going to a concert where I'm only gonna know like three songs so i don't know i've never been to a concert if beyonce came girl i'm going even if the ticket costs like 15k i will not eat for a month but i'm going to a beyonce concert to a festival i don't know if a spring day festival counts there used to be a zoo lake spring festival every first of september we went there once maybe twice with dizzy basil it was nice i loved it i think at one time my fiki zolo came i enjoyed that but we haven't been in a while i actually don't even know if they still do that but on my bucket list, go to a concert. Do you prefer the city or the country? Not the city. I grew up in a village. I really love village living. It's so laid back, so chilled out. That's why I absolutely love where we stay right now. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's super quiet. I know it's not going to be like this forever, but right now I'm enjoying it. Where did you grow up? I grew up in the village. I grew up in Northwest. Very close to Botswana border. Um, that's a place I still call home to this day. What social media platform do you use the most? At the moment, it's Instagram, which is crazy because I have this very strong love-hate relationship with Instagram. But I use Instagram a lot, and when I post on Instagram, I auto-share to Facebook, and then I will take that reel and put it up on my TikTok. What's the one thing you wish people knew about you? That I actually really love making you friends. When you so used to staying home and you absolutely love staying home sometimes it comes across as you really don't want to make new friends or you know you're too awkward to make friends and i wish people gave me a chance to move past the awkwardness of the first initial meeting stages so they can get to know me because once you really get to know me ask aisha <laughs> all the first impressions she had about me 
out the window because now she knows who I am. My late best friend, Bridget, will tell you exactly the same. She even said at our wedding that the, her first impression sort of me was that I am rude and awkward and we probably would never ever be friends. <laughs> and there we were, besties, you know? So yeah, I wish people knew that about me, but at the same time, I don't know how to make people know that about me. It's weird. <laughs> What is your morning routine? Ooh, my morning routine is actually very basic and easy right now. Absolutely enjoying it. I wake up at five. Obviously, you know, brush the teeth, all the fun stuff, get dressed, and I go for my morning walk. Love it. Come back and we start the morning routine for the kids. Dizzy gives them a bath. I pack their lunches, set up their breakfast table, make up their bags, pick up their clothes, set up their school bags, get them fed, they eat up, I brush their hairs, and pretty much take the kids to school. By the time I come back home, it's around 15 minutes to eight, and I will take a shower and do whatever needs to be done whether it's cleaning or working or emails or basically whatever it is I have planned for that day how many countries have you traveled to Lesotho Swaziland Zimbabwe Zambia Mozambique Namibia Botswana seven 80 foot count essay which I think we should <laughs> what is the first thing you do after going home from work or school oh my god take off my bra oh my god is that bad <laughs> what's your favorite movie I'm sure you guys know this one. And if you don't, well, I guess that's why I'm doing this, get to know me a little more. But my all-time favorite movie, it's movies. Transformers movies, oh my god, love them, love, love, love them. I love that every time I watch it, I don't get bored, like I still wanna sit through the whole movie and watch it. It's so cool, love it. The editing, mwah, chef's kiss, the sound effects, even better. Michael Bay, look, if I ever get to meet you. What books have changed your life? Ooh, somebody's calling me. What books have changed your life? Oh my goodness, I have listened to a few different books lately. I'm going into my Audible account. Because I walk so much, I have had a chance to not listen to so many books because Lord knows I do not have the time or the patience to sit down and read an actual book. I know there are people who actually prefer reading actual books than audiobooks, but I'm, I'm here for audiobooks. At the very top of my head, I have Girl, Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis. Oh my God, that book, that book. I listened to it first back in 2018 crying and everything like it was such an emotional book at the time when I was listening to it I listened through the whole thing and then I listened again in 2020 and then I recently listened to the book again it's just incredible I've listened to what happened to you this one is by Oprah Winfrey and Bruce Perry Dr. Bruce Perry also loved it it's more of a podcasty kind of audiobook which I loved I bought the physical book but I couldn't read it because I don't have the time and so it was easier to just listen to the audio book and then I listened to The Art of Letting Go by Nick Trenton. Oh my god, these books. <sighs> Life-changing. If you're looking for audiobooks to listen to, try those three. Incredible stuff. What is your favorite Netflix show? Ooh. At the moment, I don't really have a specific favorite on Netflix. I actually don't watch a lot of let me not lie, let me not lie. On Netflix, I enjoy Virgin River and Sweet Magnolia, which is so out of character for me, but they haven't released any new episodes. I also watched Emily in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> the first few seasons were nice, but this recent one, I'm just like, okay, is this what they mean when they say on again, off again relationship? Because I really don't understand the situation between Emily and Gabrielle. Like, can they just get it over and done with? It's so annoying, it's dragging, and it's become very like up in the clouds, fluffy, super unrealistic. But I, I still watched anyway. I didn't enjoy it as much, but I watched. But my go-to on Netflix are always like documentaries. They actually have literally suggested an entire session of real life documentaries for me. I love those, I enjoy that. It can be documentary about nature, murder documentary, documentary about NASA. I saw the other one about Apollo 13. I love stuff like that on Netflix. Netflix hardly ever have nice movies, but if they do have a guns blazing movie, I'm all over it. <laughs> How many girlfriends slash boyfriends have you had? Ooh, getting personal. Um, three, two ex-boyfriends and Dizzy Basil, <laughs> if he counts, I guess. I mean, there was, no, there was no time when I was in boarding school, there was no time at all. So it was just the one guy while I was in boarding school and this was like maybe during my trick. He was also back home. And then of course I left home and I went to university and I met somebody while I was in university that ended and then I met Dizzy Basil and here we are. <laughs> if you could live anywhere, where would it be? Oh, without a doubt. 
Namibia. Which of your parents do you resemble? I think I look more like my dad, but when my dad is not here, I look kind of like my mom, but deep down, I, I think I am my father's child. What phone do you use? I still am sticking to my iPhone 13 Pro Max. I do not have the pressure to upgrade or update it or whatever. It still does what a phone is supposed to do and I'm pretty happy with that. What's the most interesting thing you have learned recently? Ooh, learned isn't like I learned that or found out, I don't know. But the most interesting thing I recently learned from somebody else was about the Nando sauce. <laughs> that the Nando sauce is actually made cooked from scratch using real ingredients in Midrand. What's your favorite childhood memory? Oh my God. This one I will never ever forget. There was one time when we were kids, and I say we because it was me and my cousin. My mom went somewhere, I'm not sure where she went. I mean, I was a kid, nobody was telling me much, but she went somewhere someday and she came back really, really late. I think it was a trip or something and she came back late and I remember her coming with a whole bunch of snacks and sweets and she threw them on the bed and me and my cousin were like rummaging through them, trying to pick which ones we wanted. It was so nice and it was late in the night. We forced ourselves to stay up until she came back home and when she did, she came with all these snacks and we're like just going at it. It was, <sighs> it was so cute. I have a whole bunch of childhood memories. The other one that I, I was recently having a good laugh about, again with my cousin, I practically grew up with my cousin because she was born in Fab, I came in July, so we were literally like, Twins. <laughs> there was a time when we were at my grandparents. At this time, my parents had moved out of my grandparents' house and we had our own home, but I would still go back to my grandparents because that's the place I called home for so long. To this day, I kind of still call it home. It's so weird, so confusing. Anyway, um, they had peach trees and a big garden. My grandfather used to be like into gardening and stuff. And so the peaches were like, full bloom, we're not allowed to go up the tree. And so I was the lookout. There was one ripe peach and she got it and she threw it to me and she said I must hold it while she's coming down the tree and I took a bite. What? She was so angry, she started crying and my grandfather came out to find out what's going on and now he's getting mad that we are eating the peaches and that she went up the peach tree and we're not allowed to. I literally ran straight home. I was like, I'm not gonna stay and find out what's happening. I took one bite. She can eat the rest. And I just went home to my parents and I got them. Acting all cool, like nothing happened. Like, where were you? Oh, I was there. I went to my grandparents' house. So like, oh, okay. Meanwhile, I don't tell them, oh yeah, the house is on fire back then. What type of music do you prefer? I really, truly, genuinely prefer the 90s R&B. This probably makes me sound so old. I don't get this nowadays music. I don't get it. I, I can't enjoy it. I don't get it. And I always look at Gamma singing these things and I'm just like, I don't get it. Is your generation stuff? I, I don't have to get it. <laughs> My parents probably didn't get what we were listening to either, so. What is the one thing you will never do again? Um, what's the one thing I would never, oh my God, I have one. What's the one thing I would never do again? I would never go on a cruise again. <gasps> no, mm -mm. no. The other day she was like, oh, MSC Musica is coming or it's here or something. And I was like, Bing. I'll drive down to Devon with you and then I'll wait for you in some fancy hotel there while you go on a cruise. I'm not doing it. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> if you had a warning label, what would it say? Take time to know me. I don't know. Some, I think for me, this kind of relates to what's the one thing I wish people knew about me. You know, I'm actually, I'm a, I'm a cool person. I think I'm a cool person, but there's a lot of awkwardness on top of that coolness that you have to make your way deep deep into it to get to the coolness and so if i had a warning label it literally would say take time to know me but probably with like you know the fine print would also say don't mess with me <laughs> don't mess with me especially if you don't know me do you watch romantic movies no well no is a strong word but I don't purposefully go and click on a romantic movie. I fall asleep, they're just too slow, too emotional, too this, too that. I want guns blazing. I need a great storyline with lots of guns blazing, great editing, and I'm all over it. That's why Marvel is so mwah, chef's kiss. Have you ever disliked something and then changed your mind on the same? Yeah, there was a time where I couldn't stand sushi. I couldn't stomach it. I couldn't, I didn't even want to look the direction of sushi. If you were coming my way with sushi, I would look the other way because I was just that disgusted. Then I tried it, then I tried it again, and then I tried it again, and I'm, now I'm just like, ooh. There are times where I catch myself literally saying, ooh, I, I feel for sushi, and I'm just like, girl, 
who are you? It really has grown into me. I don't eat it often because I still get that little fishy gag sometimes if I eat it often. So few and far apart always works. And I want the fried one because it's so good. Mm -hmm. I'm celebrating. <laughs> what do you need when you are stressed? I need time out. I need time by myself. I was telling Dizzy during my midlife crisis situation, I said to him, have you ever just felt like running away? Like you literally just want to run. Don't pack anything. Don't take anything. Just run. Get in the car, start driving and drive as far as your fall will take you. Of course, he's just like, no. <laughs> but when I get like that, I know I need time out. Like I need to be by myself. I'm overstimulated, overwhelmed, and it's just too much. My running list just won't stop running. And I need to take a deep breath and just step back for a minute. And usually what does it for me is either going to the movies, like that mind numbing exercise of just sitting there and watching the screen by myself for like three hours. And I'm staying by myself because I'm usually the only person in the cinema. Always does it for me. By the end of the movie, I always am able to say, okay, I've sort of spaced myself out from everything that's overwhelming me and I can rearrange and reorganize everything and actually hit the ground running with what needs to be done. Or alternatively, I just go for a drive, like get in the car and I just drive. <laughs> Sometimes I just go home, I go to my parents. What would be the one thing you would change about yourself if you could? My introvertedness, and I probably can't change that. I mean, I am learning to change that, but with that introvertedness comes a lot of overthinking and so I spend a lot of time in my head going through scenarios that the next person probably completely forgot about already and there I am still dissecting it word for word and step by step and it means absolutely nothing because there's absolutely nothing I can do about it at the time it's already done but there I am still hate it. Of course there are ways to manage that and survive it and all that fun stuff and so that's what I'm tapping into and leaning into now more than ever because there's no way I'm turning 40 and still terrified to actually socialize. Like what is this? <laughs> are you a romantic person? 100%. I wear my heart on my sleeves. Yeah. Okay, come back girl. I think I'm down to the last question. Yeah. You don't look your age. Has anyone said this to you before? I chuckled when I was copying this question. You know, very recently when I did my Six Sigma training, this is actually a funny story. When I did the training, obviously I was with people that are still in corporate. They're coming from different companies, all their fun stuff. I just showed up as me doing it in my own private capacity. And so I didn't really prepare anything intro wise. I didn't want to because I didn't want to sound very scripted. When I got there, it was just the lecture guy and one other person. So we did introductions, all their fun stuff. And they're just like, where are you from? Like which company? And I was like, no, actually I just left corporate. I was with this company for 10 years and before then I was with two different companies as well and so I just left and, and the lecturer says oh my god you don't look like you've been in corporate for like 10 years at all and so the next day we were talking about kids and I you know I don't even know how we were talking about kids and help and eventually I said yeah I have an 11 year old who can actually help me with this stuff it's great and everybody again is like you have an 11 year old girl. You don't look like you, you have a kid at all. And I was just like, oh, I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you. It's just a random recent example, but this everywhere I go, most of the time, let me not be big headed. Most of the time people tell me I don't look my age, which can be very confusing. I honestly find it very confusing when people say I don't look my age. Cause I'm like, what does my age look like? I don't know. I, I, I genuinely get confused sometimes because I'm too young to be seen as old, but too old to be seen as young young I'm, I'm there in the in between and it's so confusing but I mean I am a mother of three I have been in corporate for almost 15 years and um, I've done a whole bunch of things and to be told I don't look my age is always it's almost like a slap in the face I know it's meant as a compliment but it's very like okay what does my age look like <laughs> Anyway, that was a very long-winded answer. We have come to the end of these 34 random questions about me. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you got to know me a little bit more. I obviously had a ton of fun filming this. I really genuinely missed you guys. I missed being here. I missed recording. I missed talking because as much as I am an introvert, I do enjoy sitting in front of a camera and talking to you guys. So I really did miss this. Let me know in the comment section down below and um, where you're watching from, how long you've been watching, all the fun stuff. Let's basically reconnect. I feel like we have lost a little bit of each other during my midlife crisis phase. 
Um, I do hope all of that is over and done with because it sucked. I hated being so uncontent discontent i think that's how you say it with everything because i i typically am very happy with my life i love my life i don't want like honestly if i were to die tomorrow god forbid i would die happy the only thing that would break my heart is that my kids are still so small life-wise i've done things i've lived i'm happy i'm okay <laughs> and so those confusing feelings were very just so confusing and i do hope they are way past me now and we can move on along and keep it moving and have a good time so yeah i hope you enjoyed thumbs it up and don't forget to subscribe like gamma would say we'll catch you besties on our next one bye besties Tonight we're running